Next to Dunedin and India are the opposition. India desperate for a victory to keep their faint hopes of qualifying for the semi-finals alive. Chris Cairns comes in for Danny Morrison. Chris Harris leads the World Cup table with 13 wickets so far. India have struggled with only Tendulkar and Azruddin making runs on a consistent basis. The Indians won the toss and decided to bat and we pick up the action with the very first ball. Chris Keynes to bowl the first ball of this very important match for India. And it's a full toss, a big appeal. Well, Keynes demanding it to Richard Hadley. What a dramatic start that might have been. Well, we've seen the dramatic starts in one or two other matches before, but here we have Chris Keynes getting into his work. Full toss. Well, it may have missed leg, then again it just may have hit it. There's a bit of turn there, and Patel, as I say, has been very, very successful in this competition. He's conceded at the most in his 10 overs, 36 runs. I mean, that's an outstanding performance. And, of course, last week, one for 19 against the West Indies. Very, very impressive. Here's Shrikant going over the top, and Rod Latham's waiting for it, and makes the catch, Rod Latham. Shrikant out in the second over, and New Zealand's made a dramatic breakthrough. India are four for one, and we're still in the second over. Well, I guess Shrikant's been forced into this move, and he's been one of the only batsman in the whole competition to really have a go at Patel he did the I think the uh, the effort was probably right but he just hit it probably too well and too straight and Latham takes a pretty good catch a simple one in fact well he certainly didn't have to run for it it was hit directly to him and so the move of using Deepak Patel at the starts paid off again Shrikant going India are four for one and the new batsman is the Indian captain Mohammad Azharuddin bad luck for India obviously leaving the park here and I think he'll struggle to uh, resume his innings at any stage and that is a shame for India. So Tendulkar will obviously come out to replace Jody Jar. And Tendulkar off the mark. A little inside edge, he'll come back for the second, comfortable enough. Just uh, nips that one down the leg side, and that's four. That'll run away. Well played. Just straying a little, Chris Cairns. And as a return, able to catch up with it. Yes, it looked to bounce on him here. At, uh, and just flicking it off the hip. Getting it very fine indeed. That uh, fine leg down there is much wider than that. But getting it just above hip high. No one obviously catching around the corner, so he could play freely at it. Tell to bowl the 12th over. Tendalka hitting firmly down Beach Crow. Tendalka coming back for the third. So it was well struck. Crow, I think he thought that he probably had it covered. As it's in the air and dropped. Once again, the ball hit firmly. That's three times today. The ball's been hit in the air, been hit close to, but not directly to a fielder, and it's been put down. Yes, uh, good delivery that man, and uh, Tendulkar head high in the air, drove it officially, uh, had short cover where Latham disappointingly dropped that one. Well, there was an example of a shot that went very aerially initially, but he managed to get it square of third man and hit it so hard that it defeated third man coming around but you can see that there wasn't really too much room there glenn because the ball was pitched on about off stump coming in but he did it really well with tindok he gave himself enough room to free his arms and hit that it's a lovely shot from ezra din straight through extra cover that's the best shot of the day. 24 overs gone and just 77 for one. India, three in the offside saving the single and just one in the on and defending that onside boundary. 
But uh, Crow can't defend much more from this position. He must remember, keep four. It's a big shot, a very big shot indeed from Tim Delka. One bounce, four over each to cover. Yes, it looks as though Tendulka has decided things aren't going well enough. And that's a magnificent stroke. He got inside it and hit it inside out over some over cover. See the angle of the bat there opening up the blade. Even though the delivery was almost on off stump, he did very well indeed to get it there. That's pretty wide too, and that's too wide, and that has enough room for Tendulka just to thrash the ball through. So Tendalka, 49. And there's his 50. Good knock by young Tendalka. He came out when India seemed in trouble. They'd only lost one wicket, but they had lost Jadi Jar with the hamstring problem. And he's helped his skipper, Azaruddin, through to a very respectable 107 for one after 28 overs. And in the air, cutting away, that'll be four. Good shot by Tendalka. Given a little bit of room, he's cut it. It's gone over the infield and into the boundary for four. That's a crashing shot through extra cover. And great match is never going to get to that. He did very well indeed to get it there. And Tendalka looks to be in commanding form at the moment. He's been in very little trouble since he's been at the crease. As a Dean, more of an anchor role. And that's the way the partnership should work as well. Somebody occupying the crease, keeping one end tied up while the other one plays a few shots. So they work well together in this partnership. And that's six. It's over the top. And just clearing the fence. As a Dean reaching his 50 now. Three fours and a six in that, 97 deliveries. And this is what India will be doing, quickening the pace. Azaruddin charging and tackling the boundary fielder. There is a long on down there, and he just got it over the edge. He obviously decided that it was worth risking. Patel now on his last, his 10th over, has one for 27, and Azaruddin deciding that he will try and spoil those figures a little. Well, that's what Chris Srikanth tried to do to the third delivery of uh, Patel's first over and didn't quite make it, as Radin has. Could be out. He's taken it. That great batch. A brilliant catch again. And as Radin, after reaching 55, deciding to have a go at Patel in his last over. Nine runs coming from it already. Mark Rabat has taken a very good low diving catch on the wide mid-on boundary. Very wide mid-on boundary. Glenn. Yes, well he's charging and it was a full toss and you watch it juggle here from Great Batch. Did he catch it? He got under it and then it's as though he hugged it under there and he came up with the ball and claimed the fact that he caught it. See how he hugged it in against his body there. The umpires looked to go together to talk about it, but Azaruddin was quite happy and was walking off the park, so that was not necessary. So India's second wicket down with a total at 149 and the 37th. And this is over, mid-off. It'll probably go all the way. It does. Willie Watson trying to get back there. Tendulka seeing where the gap in the field was, charging. It's very wide again, actually a poor delivery. Tendulka, given the width he wanted, and just a little top edge, fine enough not to deviate too much for Smith. And Tendulka, the hero of the Indian in innings to date, is dismissed. And now India 167 for three. And a new batsman, Kapil Dev, has come to the crease because Tendulka's out. Azraddin's gone earlier. And Kapil Dev just whips that one around the corner and hits it very well indeed and picks up four runs. 
Look, Apple Dev is a wonderful striker of the ball once he gets in and uh, tends to play that shot quite a lot, particularly uh, at the depth of the last few overs of an innings. Even in test matches, he tends to hoik it a bit round there, but he can hit the ball beautifully straight too. I tend to think a lot of them are going to go in that area on the onside. Yes, he picked that up superbly. And he goes again, and my word, that's through the extra cover. Field and away for four more. And Kapaldev middling that one beautifully. Well, we'll see a bowling change. Chris Harris coming on to relieve Chris Cairns. And, well, I think that's a little bit surprising. Even though Cairns went for 14 in the last over, I just wonder whether... Yeah, he might have bowled another one, but Harris, he's the most successful wicket-taker in this competition. Oh, he's hit it straight back for Harris, and Harris has another wicket. Mandrake gets a simple catch back to Chris Harris, and Chris Harris makes no mistake, and India have lost another wicket. Well, it's not a major problem or disaster for India, but uh, Mandrake, I think, just stopped his shot there. The ball might have just held up a little bit and just... Pushed it straight back. Simple catch. It's 201 for four. So the new man, Banerjee, and the board into the side. And we'll see what he can do. He hasn't got much time to do it in. Chris Harris just removing Mandraker. Got that on the toe of the bat almost. Richard spooned it back. Simple catch. Yes, he did. It uh, certainly wasn't supposed to go there. We must say that uh, <laughs> very good bowling change by Crow. <laughs> very cunning, very cunning, Richard. Indeed. <laughs> and that's a big hit. That's going to be caught. Is it late and underneath it? Is it Larson? It's Larson makes the catch. That's a big blow for New Zealand. Harris has his third wicket. And Kapaldev is out. Caught Larson. Bowled by Harris for 33. It's 222 for four. Yes, well, he could have hit it on the offside and played a similar shot. Because it was a fraction shorter, he decided to go onside and fetch it and was not able to quite get it over Larson there, who took a very good catch. So the Indians now 222 for five. Yes, he judged it very well, did Gavin Larson. Now, this is the last over of the Indian innings. 223 for five. Banerjee swings through mid-wicket and he's caught. for 11 in the last over it's 223 for six yes Banerjee looking to pick the ball up on side here which he's entitled to do and didn't really get enough on it and we saw great batch taking a good catch this time and he decides to catch it in his hands rather than under his armpit <laughs> <laughs> a reference to a previous catch which was nearly misjudged to the extent of disaster but the young guns certainly are firing out here. Sakin Tendulkar, the star for India, with an outstanding 84. But Deepak Patel once again restricted the batsman and was the pick of the New Zealand bowlers. Without Tendulkar and Azaruddin, India would have been well short of 200. 231 should be within New Zealand's grasp. Great Batch and Latham once again open the innings. We pick up their reply in the second over. They've moved on to three for no wicket, with Prabhaka bowling to great batch. Down the wicket goes, great batch and thumps it over the extra cover field and into the boundary for four. Well, we've seen a bit of that in the last week or so and he's continued. Well, I suppose if you can do that, shot to Malcolm Marshall belting Prabhaka is almost like child's play <laughs> he certainly hit it that rocketed into the boundary out there super shot and he's just uh, guided this one wide of Moray and a dive there but four more so that's set the Carisbrook crowd alight Oh, that was a very good shot. He got his bat right in behind it, and then seeing that he had control over it, he was able just to open the face and guide it right down there, hit it fine enough to beat Banerjee. Yes, that was a super shot, wasn't it? Just opening the face, very typical one-day shot. Good dive down there by Banerjee, but to, to no avail. So, things underway for New Zealand.
it this time. That's a lovely shot. Well, that answers the critics, doesn't it? Stands up, bangs it into the covers off the back foot. Lovely shot. When Latham plays like that, he looks as good as anybody in the world because he's got plenty of time. He's taken a little half step forward. He saw it was short. He transferred his weight very quickly. And even though there was no flourish to it, it's a marvellous bat he's got. And he's very strong and his timing was quite outstanding. Oh, a short arm jab, this one. Square of the wicket on the onside, six runs. Well, he just literally flicked his wrists and into the new stand it went. Six runs, 27 for no wicket. Prabhaka strikes first for India, and Latham's been bowled for eight. It's 36 for one now, leaving great batch 26 not out. Obvious frustration here from Latham. Tries to hit. He hits right across it to try and hit it over mid-wicket, and if you do that, you've got to get your pad closer to it and go through with it. He didn't uh, achieve that, and so New Zealand's first wicket falls after seven overs, 36 for one. So Jones gets his first ball, and it's outside the off stump. And the over comes to an end, 36 for one, out completed. Just above the hill, looking down on Carisbrook, Dunedin, the South Island of New Zealand. It's a lovely shot again from Great Batch. He's found the side boundary again, and one bounce into the hoardings. A little bit short. We haven't seen a big shot for a while from Great Batch. It was due. Yes, it wasn't a pick-up either. It was just short of a length. And look how he cocks his leg up as he just <laughs> fetches it. Instead of going square or behind square, it goes more towards mid-wicket. One bounce into the fence. And he goes again. This is high in the air. It's six runs. Oh Ian Robinson says six. And the crowd love it here at Carisco. Well, Richard... Good entertaining stuff, isn't it? Well, it's quite an unbelievable batting display, isn't it? Mark Great Batch. He's really gone from one extreme to the other. For somebody who couldn't hit the ball off the square, perhaps at the beginning of the season, now has really hit the ball to and over the boundary all too frequently. And uh, that is not a problem for New Zealand, is it? And, uh, very good on the leg side and his pickups. He is and, super uh, stuff. He's been very, very positive. I just wonder how long it can keep going for. way down the ground that won't be six in fact it struggles over the boundary in the end because it pitched and stopped a little but four more well there we are looking out uh, to white island and plenty of white caps out there pretty tough day on the sea today if you're a fisherman but uh, we're tough recently for a fish i would think too uh... <laughs> it'd be tough if they weren't out there richard <laughs> <laughs> anyway there's a change in the bowling attack three now to uh come on and replace Kappel who went for what 34 and six overs and Mark Greatbatch there's his 50 wonderful 50 from Mark Greatbatch he's coming back for the second so he's on to 51 but the crowd here at Carisbrook giving Mark Greatbatch a wonderful hand for what has been a very entertaining 50 he has 47 deliveries for his 50, four fours in that and three sixes. Good shot, straight down the ground. And this should run away, just keeping on going. And it has, well that was well played, it was timed. And it beat mid on. I was going to say that a lot of bowlers have come in uh, some fearful stick with great batch being there, but there's Andrew Jones. That's a lovely on drive, and of course mid on is reasonably wide. Right. Well, Andrew Jones has dispensed with the head here. He's not feeling the cold at the moment. He's working very hard for New Zealand out there. Nice shot by Andrew Jones. Nobody out of long on. That's four. He's an extremely good cricketer, isn't he, Andrew Jones? And I'm surprised that uh, he hasn't yet hit a one-day hundred. Well, he's made 93 as his highest score in a match against Bangladesh, but he's been so consistent, averaging in the mid-40s, Andrew Jones, and a shot of real quality, that one. Getting it wide of mid-on. And 
was always going to run away 4-4. He's done it again this time through the offsides. Lovely shot. Just enough way on. Consecutive fours. Really a typical Andrew Jones shot. He loves to play through the offside, both off the back foot and the front foot. And that one, everything was in the right place and just enough way on for the ball to beat Prabhakar into the boundary. Banerjee is hit for six. Fine shot by Great Bat, straight back over the bowler's head. in the slot for him and Mark Greatbatch opening the innings today and what a wonderful uh, innings it's been he's on 73 and he's gone for the big hit he could be caught he is caught Mark Greatbatch is out he tried to swing Raju away over the fence at mid wicket he didn't quite hit it as well as he might and he is gone. Showing frustration there after such a fine knock. Just a pity to be strangled by that one. I think he tries to get it square here. In fact, no, he tried to get it behind square. The man is in front out there at a deepish mid-wicket and hit it straight down his throat. That's Banerjee. And so after a marvellous knock of 73 and 76 balls, New Zealand are 118 for two. Well, Martin Crowe, the New Zealand skipper, making his way out to the middle of Carrisbrook. A very good round he got to as Mark Greatbatch departed. Rogers into his third over has one for six. Jones down the ground. The new, he might have been a bit lucky that he hit it so hard because it went straight back over the top of Raju. But my word, it was travelling like a bullet, and Raju didn't even have time to react to it. Yes, indeed. Superb uh, front-footed try by Andrew Jones. Well-timed, perfectly executed. Right down the pitch and drives it past the bowler. Raju has got a steady length. Jones down the pitch again, thumping the ball down to long off. Stand in your crease, Andrew Jones. That's four. 28 overs gone, 137 for two. So Chris Shrikant who's come in very close with the new batsman Crow, who can scarcely be said to be in poor form. He's coming to try and put a bit of pressure on him. Yes, uh, with, the, with the spinner, left arm spinner bowling at Martin Crow, they're, they uh, they're expecting a bat and pad catch uh, at Silly Point. Well, they're not going to get one from there anyway. That's a huge hit from Martin Crow. Just raced across the turf to the boundary at the square leg. There's Crow going over the square leg again. That's six. Well, look at the win. Yes, that was a that was a loose delivery by Kapil. They were short and lifting, and Martin Crow had plenty of time to get behind it and smack it towards the mid wicket boundary for six. Crow in the air but safe just over square leg it should run away for four it does so Martin Crow another four and my word he's getting on with the job and 162 for two New Zealand racing towards the target well it looks like a formality Martin Crow has been pretty severe there he likes to sweep the spinners he's done it uh, on numerous occasions uh, I'd say that Raju would have very cold hands out there at the moment, very difficult for a spinner. So Crow there on 26, Andrew Jones 41 at the other end. And of course Mark Great makes that wonderful innings. There's the comparison. And uh, New Zealand in a pretty comfortable spot at the moment. Oh, well done by Moray. Out, he's been he's out. Gone, he's gone, and he's hit the out. stumps. I didn't realise it hit the stumps. What a slick piece of work by Moray. He dived away. 
reversed the ball, flicking it behind him, hitting the stumps, and Martin Crow was out of his crease. I didn't realise that it hit the stumps, but it certainly did. So, very good work by the keeper, Moray. Yes, he did well. Very well. Look at that. Oh, that's superb stuff by Moray. Crow out, and New Zealand 162 for three. Well, interesting change to the New Zealand batting lineup. Ian Smith, many of the crowd were expecting their hero, Ken Rutherford, at to come out but uh, I don't think there's too much doubt about what he'll uh, do for Barker and Ian Smith swings it away one bounce four runs well that's a typical Ian Smith quick shot <laughs> wide mid wicket he picks him up from anywhere really doesn't he just a little whip yes yeah, super shot and very much and Ian Smith shot. He's just about got a mortgage on that one, hasn't he? So, Ian Smith on strike again. And away he goes again. This is high. Could it could be caught. He is caught. Yes, well. he's gone. And it's Amray out there. Hello. A parting word from Ian Smith. And, but there's no question he's out. Caught in the deep, just forward of square, trying to hit it away. Got it a little too high. Picked it up all right in the middle of the bat, but it went very high and gone. Yes, well, that's Prabhaka's reply. The ball before going for four. Smith trying to do the same. And Prabhaka gets the wicket. So Kenny Rutherford now is the New Zealand batsman coming to the crease. 172 for four. Energy back into the attack and Jones gets it through extra cover and that's his 50 his 23rd 50 in one day internationals for New Zealand Andrew Jones Jones taking his 50 from a shot that went in the air a good deal of the, uh, the way towards the field but he split those two very nicely just behind point and the man at cover Rutherford gets a short ball, which he plays beautifully. That's in the gap. That's four. And quite a classy shot from Rutherford. Let it come on and placed it just wide of the left hand of the man behind point, but square enough to defeat third man. And using the pace of the ball nicely over the top of it and clipping it just behind point. It's a shot he plays very, very well. So 44 runs needed from 70 balls. New Zealand in this tremendously strong position now with six wickets in hand. There he goes through mid wicket and it's in the air but it's quite safe. There's no one out there and it's one bounce. Or is it going to be six? Did it go over? Over the grass, into the ditch. Well, I thought for a moment the way he played the shot that he got it high on the bat and it spooned it over mid wicket. But it certainly kept on going. And Rutherford knew it because he just stayed where he was. And it just carried into the ditch for six. So seven bowlers used by India, and they haven't really been able to find the right combination. In the air, hit over the top, and that's going to be another marvellous boundary for the hometown boy, Ken Rutherford. His second four, he's had one six already, and he's only made 16. Going to be lucky as Ken Rutherford getting it in the air but in the gap and he gets four from a shot that he didn't really control but the result's okay and it moves Rutherford onto 21. Yes, a little streaky here from Rutherford. It must have just turned a little on him. Just out there and going off the face, thick outside edge, down to a wide third man position. Short ball, a big appeal, he's out. I think Rutherford thought it must have pitched outside leg, but umpire Ian Robinson had a long look and then took his life in his hands and gave Ken Rutherford out in Carisbrook. Yes, it kept down on Rutherford. He got into a pulling position with the ball being short and it didn't bounce. It pitched 
And it certainly was hitting middle. It's just a question of whether it pitched outside leg. It perhaps pitched on leg stump, certainly knocking middle out. And Rutherford is out now, and New Zealand lose their fifth wicket at 2.06. Chris Harris in to take strike to the left armour, Raju. One of the things about the New Zealand performance right throughout this competition has been their consistency in the field with the ball, with the bat. Great bats, Jones, Crow have all been very consistent with the bat, leaving very little opportunity for many others on the side. Good problem to have. Oh, he's bowled! A full delivery. Chris Harris playing over the top of it. It gets through and hits the off stump. So another New Zealand wicket has fallen. It's probably too little, too late. Six runs needed for victory, but Prabhaka has bowled him. Well, Chris Harris will be disappointed about this because he's looking for a nice little not out, but that was, uh, he yorked himself, really, didn't he? Yes, so you look to play through the leg side, perhaps. Uh, however, he's gone, 2-2-5 two, two, for six. New Zealand making the six remaining runs without further loss and a comfortable four-wicket victory. Their 100% record remains intact. Great Batch top scored with 73 and was supported well by Andrew Jones, who remained unbeaten on 67. Next, the clash of the two...